how can one meet a case that one does not know? And yet five years later, Mohammed Harkat is still asking that question in his case. How can he meet a case that he does not know? Four years ago, the Senate of Canada heard some two dozen witnesses looking at the new secret trials bill, which was a few amendments and, and a few window dressings. And some of those experts are here today. All of them, except for Stockwell Day at the time, said that this new version of the bill would not meet charter challenge. And so again, we ask, why is Mr. Harkat still here wearing a GPS monitoring bracelet as if it's a slave anklet? And why are Mr. Jabala and Mr. Majub of Toronto still fighting this process? We know that that bill went through the Senate because we were ignored and the Senate ignored the will of the Supreme Court of Canada as well. Three years ago this week, we learned that a CSUNS agent investigating Mr. Harkat was having an affair with one of the informants in the case. Furthermore, we learned that CSIS withheld from the federal court the fact that its main informant had failed a lie detector test, and yet still the case against Mr. Harkat continued. Thirteen months ago, Judge Simon Noel of the federal court opened the door to Mr. Harkat's deportation to torture in Algeria when he upheld the security certificate based on secret allegations that Mr. Harkat was not allowed to see, and on the word of informants, that the security cleared special advocate lawyers were not allowed to cross-examine because Mr. Noel said they couldn't be. He based his decision largely on uh, wiretaps and notes which were destroyed by CSIS years ago, something the Supreme Court ruled in 2008 was unconstitutional. So if I'm starting to sound like a broken record, we are hearing illegal activities, we are hearing unconstitutional activities, and yet this process continues. Last December, we learned that the head of CSIS received uh, information which he sent on to Stockwell Day that said essentially that all of these security certificates would be thrown out if they had to remove the information that may have been derived from torture. It's illegal to base in Canada a case on the fruits of torture. And so here we are today to call on the federal government to remove uh, the, this portion of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Act. We know Mr. Kennedy, Mr. Kenny is making an announcement this morning. He's making the wrong announcement. He should be making an announcement to say we will no longer have secret trials in Canada. They are a human rights fiasco. We do not want to be here 10 years from now still challenging the secret trial process simply because a few more modifications were made. This process is fundamentally flawed and unfair and it is time once and for all to end a process that begins in torture and ends in torture. <clears throat> it is incumbent upon the Canadian government to finally do the right thing. Unfortunately, they responded to the Supreme Court of Canada's decision not with courage and principle and an overhaul of the system which would have really conveyed a sense to, to Canadians and around the world that now in the context of Canada's national security laws and practices, human rights will matter. Instead, they tinkered, uh, and the tinkering did not address the serious shortcomings, did not ensure that the rights of Mohammed Harkat and others caught in this labyrinth of injustice would be protected. The Federal Court of Appeal has an opportunity to look at it and get it right next week, but we don't want to see this have to endlessly be fought out in the courts. What we really want to see is that the federal government to do the right thing, to step in and remove the immigration security provisions from the Canadian uh, Immigration and Refugee Protection Act, and ensure that any cases involving allegations against Canadians or permanent residents or anyone else uh, in our legal system will go ahead in full conformity with our international human rights requirements. Time is short. Uh, it is an affront to the very fabric of Canadian democracy, to the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, such a thing as certifi security certificates exist at all. The nine-year trials of Mohammed Harkat must come to an end with a clear decision that it is unconstitutional that he has been held and without charge. Ultimement, le nouveau régime qui menace de mener à la déportation de Mohamed Arkat ou qui continue de justifier la détention de Mohamed Majou depuis bientôt 12 ans ne répond pas aux exigences de la Cour suprême. Il perpétue la menace de la déportation vers la torture et faute de déportation ne règle pas la question de la détention indéfinie. Un tel abus de justice est inacceptable et nous sommes d'avis que le Code doit retourner devant la Cour suprême. La seule façon de respecter les exigences garanties par la Charte 
et en accord avec les principes de justice fondamentale, est une poursuite en vertu du code criminel ou de nouvelles dispositions avec des critères de preuve équivalents. S'il existe des preuves contre eux, les individus visés doivent avoir la possibilité de se défendre dans le cadre d'un procès public et équitable, incluant l'accès aux éléments de preuve utilisés contre eux. D'ici là, nous demandons au gouvernement de suspendre la déportation de Mohamed Arkad. Merci.